glorious Barclay Castle, a historical fortress that has seen a fair share of history and mystery pass through its halls and that has served as a backdrop for the most heinous royal crime whose echoes still fill its walls. Hello everyone, today we explore the mystery with a touch of spooky as we dive into the captivating history of Barclay Castle. Overlooking the village of Barclay in Gloucestershire, England, Barclay Castle was built in 1153 and over the centuries he served as an essential role in English history with his earls participating to many important battles. For approximately 850 years, the castle has been inhabited by the Barclay family. The first castle built here was a Mott and Bailey, built around 1027, shortly after the Norman conquest, until it was demolished to make way for the current castle midway through the 12th century. There haven't been many significant renovations to the way the castle looked. Unlike many other castles, Barclay was reasonably untouched, although it took some damage during the English Civil Wars by the hand of Cromwell's men. What do you say? Shall we go in and have a look? Maybe you should get changed first. Ooh, tunnel! It was here that the barons of the West gathered before the signing of the Magna Carta. It was here that Elizabeth I had holidays hunting and playing bowls. Even Shakespeare was here, Charles II. And it was also here that Edward II was brutally murdered. And here we are in front of the magnificent Barclay Castle, the fortress that has witnessed centuries of history. Let's go and have a look inside. The keep was built around the existing mound and originally had five round towers. The new castle was finished in about 1170 and the outer defences in about 1189. We are going to be careful, huh? Apparently the steps are uneven on purpose to trip the enemy. And knowing how accident prone I am, I'm gonna be careful. There you go. A warm welcome to Barclay Castle. Oh, look at this. Charles II. George, Prince of Denmark, has the King's Gallery. There's a deep dungeon within the keep, and this is where the carcasses of animals were thrown in, accompanied ever so often by the corpses of poor people that were killed because they offended the powerful Lord Barclay. The stench rising from this malodorous pit must have been unbearable. Here unfortunate nobles would be locked away, only with the foul air from the nearby dungeon to breathe in. It was in this living hell that Edward II found himself in 1327 when he was deposed by his wife, Queen Isabella, and her lover, Roger Mortimer. Isabella Mortimer hoped that the cell alone would kill Edward II after a few days. He did become a hill, but he recovered and he spent five months in that loathsome cell without dying. 
that were the second supporters found out where he was kept and they staged a terror rescue, which unfortunately failed and he was brought back into his cell. On the 21st of September, 1327, Edward II died of the most horrific death a monarch could possibly, anybody could possibly die of. Isabella didn't want just her husband to die. She wanted him to suffer. And the murder couldn't really be traced back to her. So he had to look like he died of natural causes. Not wanting to take the chance of, a, of another rescue attempt, Queen Isabella ordered the murder of her husband. Now, in those days, murders were either carried out by a swift hanging or a bloody beheading, but Queen Isabella wanted Edward II to suffer. According to the legend, on the 21st of September, 1327, Edward II was seized by two men carried in the cell down there and placed down on the bed and the red hot poker was inserted into his rectum, killing him from the inside and leaving no trace. Hence, he died of natural causes. Such was the king's agony that his screams could be heard way beyond the castle walls and some say that they're still echoing in the castle to this day especially on the anniversary of his death. Edward was interred at Gloucester Cathedral. The funeral was attended by Isabella and the new king, the 14-year-old Edward III. Edward II would have been brought here before being buried upstairs and he stayed here for at least two months. Edward II was finally buried here in December 1327 by his son, Edward III. I said to be a few spirits lurking around Barclay Castle. And here we are in the beautiful Great Hall. Right behind me is the Minstrel's Gallery. As you can see up there, there is a jester, and that is a jester that allegedly died in the 1700s, and he would either fell or he was pushed, possibly for telling a bad joke. He was a jester in the court of the Earl of Suffolk. One of the famous ghosts has been seen here as well. And it was a white lady going up the steps in the middle of the night. Who the white lady was, nobody knows. Oh, that's a chapel. This is the morning room, but it used to be a chapel. And it was turned into a morning room in the 18th century. And guess what? A ghost has been seen here too. Apparently it's a monk or a priest and a head floating around. It's beautiful, isn't it? Can you feel the energy here? That there is a writing of one of the beams somewhere that was discovered 
in the about 50, 60 years ago, which dates back to the 1400s. Oh my God, this is creepy. Holy moly. Who said that? It is creepy. Well, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us a... And I shall see you in the next one. And if you're interested to know what happened to Queen Isabella and Roger Mortimer, watch this video next. Thanks for watching. Bye.